Hello darkness, my old friend I've come to talk with you again Because a vision softly creeping Left its seed while I was sleeping And the vision that was planted in my brain Still remains within the sound of silence In restless dreams I walked alone Narrow streets of cobblestones Neath the halo of a street lamp I turn my collar to the cold and damp When my eyes were stabbed By the flash of a neon light That split the night And touched the sound of silence Hey, how you doing? Justin here, back with you today to check out The Sound of Silence by Simon and Garfunkel. Surely one of the most beautiful songs ever written. Just incredible. Uh, I'm going to give you a version of the finger style part because the original recording has a couple of different layers which when they weave together are really beautiful, but individually they don't kind of work so good. And I'm assuming that most people learning this are going to be looking at playing an, a part on their own rather than trying to layer stuff up in a studio or a duet. Uh, I also need to mention the capo position. Now, the capo for the original recording, in fact, I'll probably do the lesson on this, is the sixth fret. So if you want to play along with the original recording, you need to have the capo at the sixth fret. It seems like live, quite often they put the capo at the seventh fret if you want to play along with a live one. Uh, I just couldn't, like, I struggle to sing this one anyway. It's such a... It's not a, diff it's not a difficult song to sing, but to make it sound decent, I think, is fairly hard. So I had to move the capo down to the fourth fret just to be able to attempt it at all. So any of you struggling with that high notes, you might find that moving the capo down a little bit will help. Not too far down or open position unless you really want to sing it pretty low. But uh, it's definitely something to consider. We've already got a capo, so it's dead easy to move it around. The chord shapes, of course, stay the same no matter what. So actually, I'm going to leave it on the sixth fret. Uh, for the lesson part now and take you through it. There is one quirk with this song, which is both really simple and really difficult at the same time. Uh, the chord progression is different for all of the verses after the second verse. So verse 1 and verse 2 are exactly the same. Verse 3 adds a little bit longer on one chord, and verse 4 adds a, a different bit a little bit longer, and then the last verse has both of those bits a little bit longer. So it's pretty interesting. Trying to think about it is kind of more complicated than just feeling it out because it fits perfectly with the lyric. So you might want to be aware of it. I think that will help and I'll explain to you where those extended bits are. But when it comes to actually playing it, you want to try and feel it with the voice is, is really the only way to do that is uh, just being aware of where the singing's going to pause and where it's going to come back in. Uh, I think that would be the approach that you probably want to go for if you're ever going to perform the song but I do think it's a good idea to know where those little uh, quirky bits are. So we're going to start off with a look at the, like just strumming it through, keeping it real simple uh, so that you get a, an idea of where these two four bars are. If you're not familiar with the idea of a two four bar, basically all of this song is in four where we'd have four strums in the bar, but a two four bar is only going to have two strums in it. Okay. This might feel a little weird at first, but again, it fits beautifully with the lyric, and that's the, the reason uh, for the 2-4 bars is that it just fits the music beautifully, and that's what counts, right? It doesn't, the maths, it doesn't feel weird. It doesn't feel like there's a change of time, but you definitely need to know that that exists, uh, both for the finger style patterns and for any strumming that you're doing. So let's start off with a look at the chord progression. So the first chord you're going to encounter is an A sus 2 chord. <laughs> Okay, just like an A minor chord with your first finger lifted off. Okay, that's where the famous intro. Of course, we're going to look at the finger style once we've gone through the chord progression. But let's start off with now just counting our way through with four strums to the bar. So that's the intro, the A sus2, when the, uh, the vocal kind of leads in. Hello, darkness, mild. And then G, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, A minor, two. One, two, 
Now you'll notice there, there were two bars where I just counted to two. They're both on a C chord, uh, and both after a kind of a fairly fast change. So you have this F to C, one, two, and then we're into that next little section of the F, and also the C, where we have a little climb down. There's that other two uh, bar of two there as well. So let me count that through one more time. Just pay special attention to those bars where there is just two beats in it. And I'm trying to sing the melody while I'm counting the, the beats in the bar so you can clearly see where those, uh, uh, where those changes are happening. So from the A, so... Hello, darkness, smile. One, two, three, four. Come to talk with you. A one, two, three, four. So the first and the second verse are exactly the same as that progression that I've just talked about. The third verse extends one of those two four bars, the first two four bar that we encountered, and it extends it to a regular bar of four four. So we end up having the one, two, three. And it's purely to fit that line in, people writing songs, their voices never hit. That's where you need those extra beats to fit those lyrics in. So just be aware that that third verse extends the little bit where it's people writing songs that voices never share. Now, in the fourth verse, that one goes back to being a, a shorter one. But after the C, the little walk down, that's where it extends before the, before the key line of the sound of silence. Okay, so C, A minor, one, two, three, and for the G of silence. And in the last verse, it extends both of those. So where it's doing the F, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and again, F, two, C, four, one, two, three, four, and then the song continues. I may as well just do it here and then we got the yeah, C to A minor one two three and for the sound of silence so be aware of where those two changes are but like I said it's, I think it's really important that you think of it in terms of fitting with the lyrics more than trying to do the counting because the music's not about counting and maths and stuff like that it is mathematical there's a lot of maths in music and the way harmony works and stuff but it's not the point and if you're performing a tune you definitely want to be kind of feeling yourself in the music and thinking about the lyric and the content of the lyric and all of that sort of stuff much more than trying to count bars right that that's not particularly musical so let's start off with a look at the finger style the very intro third string thinner string second string thinner string again it's just that pattern three one two one now i'm using my thumb second finger first finger second finger some people play this with different fingerings and that's totally fine i would recommend finding the one that works for you and then once we get into the verse hello darkness my old friend the finger picking pattern for most of the verse there's one little tweak that we have to make halfway through but the basic pattern is going to be thumb on the thicker string second finger playing the thinner string thumb jumping all of the way over to the third string and then first finger playing the second string so thumb two thumb one thumb two thumb one might seem a little bit of a jump there for the thumb but it really makes a difference I think to the flow of the song if you use your thumb there 
it would be possible to go th uh, thumb three, two, one, thumb three, two, one. There wouldn't really be anything wrong with that, but I feel like this seems to have a bit more movement, or physically movement, but it feels like it pushes the song along better. Not exactly sure why that works, but you could choose to do that fingering if you wanted to. But my recommendation would be I can't go from one to the other very smoothly. So I would spend some time then before you go any further, just trying to get that finger picking pattern down so that you don't have to think about it. If you're trying to think about what fingers are going in what order, changing chords and all of that sort of stuff is going to be really difficult. So try and get into that habit when you're learning a finger picking pattern of doing exactly what I'm doing right now, which is playing a pattern over and over again and thinking about something else. It might not seem like a big deal, but it really makes a big difference if you can get used to the idea of thinking about something else, especially if you're going to try and sing this tune, it's a tricky one to sing as well. So if you can't get the finger style kind of automated, the chances of singing it well are probably pretty slim. Right, so spend a little bit of time there just playing that finger picking pattern just on the G chord to start off with. Get used to it. Once you feel confident with the pattern, then you might want to start moving around the different chords. So let's start doing that now together. So G is for two bars. So this is one and two and three and four and second bar of G. To either A minor or A sus too, doesn't matter. Same pattern, but now look, thumb has moved to the fifth string. It's two bars on the A. Now we move to the F for just two beats. So once round that finger picking cycle on the F, notice now thumb is playing the fourth string to C. Then another whole bar of C, so three times on the C. F to C. And now there's that two four bar before we go back to F for a whole bar. In fact, it's two bars. So four times through the picking pattern. C. Okay, let's just get up to that point because in the next bar there's something that's a little different. So again, just thinking in terms that finger picking pattern uh, is a half a bar or two beats for the whole pattern. So we have again G, one and two and three and four and G again, two and three and four, two, A minor or A sus two, two bars. Half a bar of F half a bar of C to a whole bar of C. Half a bar of F to half a bar of C to two four. So just one cycle on the C then F for two bars. C for one bar. C. Now you could choose to leave this little bit out. This is C but instead of playing with my first finger, I'm moving my second finger to the second fret, stepping down to the A. C, B note. Of course, I'm talking uh, as if the capo is not on, but uh, it isn't those exact notes. But C, thinner string, and then, sorry, thumb will jump from, it's a little bit complicated. But the speed isn't that, it's not a fast song. And then once we're on the A minor, we're back to the second half of that bar is just regular. And then there's a two, far, two four bar back on the C. So C, A minor, C. Into the G for one bar to A minor or A sus two. And at the end of the finger style strum uh, thing, you definitely want to have an A minor uh, chord, not an A sus two, just kind of brings it home a little bit. So let me just play that whole verse right the way through for you now here. So, so hello darkness, my old friend. C for 
two, four, and then the G to A minor. So the key things there really are making sure you get the finger style pattern right on one chord first of all, then just try moving that bass note around. So I would recommend just building the chord progression up very, very slowly. Then when you encounter the 2-4 bars, make sure you register, oh, here's that 2-4 bar, but do try and think of it in terms of playing along with the singing as well. Uh, playing along with the record is a great thing to do if you're using some software, you could slow it down a little bit, would be a kind of helpful thing to be able to do as well. Step one is definitely getting through that progression with the finger style thing. That's the most iconic part and some people choose to play it finger style right the way through and that's fine. Personally, I like the, the difference, the, the kind of the build up that you get if you move to strumming and it would appear that most times when they're playing it live, Paul goes through the same sort of finger style that we just did and then in the second verse he changes to a different kind of finger style pattern, a little bit more grabby, but on the record you definitely hear a shift to straight into the strumming. And within the strumming, there are a couple of little tricks that I can show you that I feel really bring it out and make it sound a little bit more interesting. So let me take you back through the strumming now and show you some of these chord embellishments that you might like to throw in. So I'm likely to just be strumming with my thumb here, maybe my first finger, but more likely the fleshy part of my thumb because it's a nice round sound. I've just come from finger style. I don't want the jolt of, of moving to a pick. Uh, but the G chord, when I'm strumming, I'm likely to use this G, which some of you might not have encountered before. I'm just using my third finger. It's playing the thicker string, muting the fifth string. Uh, the strings uh, two, three, and four are open, but the underneath of that third finger is muting the thinner string there. Now, the cool thing about that is that it means that I can use first the, the other three fingers to add this embellishment here of this. Okay, so I've got one and two and the and after two, I'm putting my second finger down, second fret of the third string, obviously relative to the capo. One and two and three and four and one. Then first finger's going down the first fret of the second string and little finger down in the third fret of the second string after it. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and again and two and three and four and one two three four one and two and three and four and one I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying using my first finger a bit more for that. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. And on the A minor, one and two and three and four and one. So one and two and I'm lifting off first finger, putting it back down. And then little finger going down in the uh, third fret, second string, uh, sus four. And then, well, that was a bit too grabby, but then you want to try and accent that top note because what you're after is uh, that's the little melody you're trying to bring out so on the G And after two and the and after four, you're lifting off the second finger on the C chord. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, and one, two, three. One, two, and three. You see there that I can still do that bass movement, C. And after two, I'm moving my second finger over to that B note.
Now, whether you choose to play this one all fingerstyle or fingerstyle and strumming, do think about the dynamics so that you've got a little bit of movement in the song. If it's the same all of the way through, it gets a little bit monotonous for the listener. So I definitely recommend exploring some variations there. If you're strumming, you can still strum loud and soft as well, or with variations or without variations. So see if you can experiment with a few things. There is a beautiful live version of this song that I definitely would recommend you check out as well. I mean, their voices are just sublime in that in that as well. Uh, Paul Simon does a beautiful little kind of chord melody in intro for it as well which I may work out if there's enough interest let me know in the comments below uh, and uh, the way that he uses the dynamics through the tune is just amazing you know he's an incredible guitar player so it, it, it really uh, pretty special performance and definitely worth checking out but again I would encourage you to try and find your own version as well like learning songs like the record really good idea a lot to be learned from doing that but if you wanted to try using a different finger style pattern or a different chord progression or putting the capo in a different place or playing the, the same chords a different way you, you really I would encourage you to explore different approaches to this song it's such a beautiful classic and you know if you you're going to play it your own way that you bring your own side of your own musicianship out when you start to explore that sort of stuff so uh really hope you enjoyed this one there'll be a tab of course over on the website if you go and check that out there'll be a link in the description i'll see you for plenty more very soon wishing you a fantastic day bye